when I met uh, Abram Hill, I thought to myself, what better place than New York to start this kind of thing? So in talking with Abe, we decided that uh, after quite a few meetings, we decided we'd call in some other people. We called in about six other people. We had a meeting one night, and we decided to start the American Negro Theater. This was in 1940, early in the spring of 40. We finally managed to get on our first production, which was uh, on Stryber's Road. For the next decade after its founding, the American Negro Theater embraced the spirit of its predecessors, and O'Neill and his staff laid the groundwork for the Negro Ensemble Company, the new Lafayette Theater, Frank Silvera's Writer's Workshop, and generally paved the way for the insurgent black theater movement of the 60s. Among the illustrious alumni of the ANT that was located in the basement of the Schomburg Library in Harlem are Sidney Poitier, Harry Belafonte, Ruby Dee, and Clarice Taylor. The American Negro Theater was one of the first theaters that said, uh, we can do it ourselves. And they had two or three projects that swish, you know, when you can do it yourself, white Americans always say, oh, wow, we better grab that. So they grabbed out of Lucasta, moved to Broadway, and moved those artists into another kind of economic structure. And that economic structure meant, wow, man, I can pay my rent now. I can send my kids to school now. I can get paid for my art. Okay? While a nationalist said, okay, I'm going to get me a regular job and do my art on the side. My art is never going to be able to pay for uh, sending my kids to school, uh, paying my rent. I got to get me a regular job. I got to be a social worker mm -hmm. or architect mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or something else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Fred O'Neill and that group of artists was one of the first who said I can survive on my art. You know? And they coalesced with uh, everybody from Theodore Bickell to Herschel Bernardi to uh, Julian Mayfield, uh, all these wonderful artists, you know, who were a part of the radical left. We produced a play called Anna Lacosta, and it was uh, quite successful. And we had a number of people who wanted to um, uh, take it to Broadway. And uh, the uh, producer that won out was Jack Wildberg, taking almost all of the people who were in the play. And of course, hardly anybody knows about that play today, especially young people. And in a way, just, why should they? But the fact was, it was an enormous success in Harlem. And uh, a Broadway producer, John Wildberg, came up to see it. Well, everybody came up to see it. And the, the theater was on 135th Street in the basement of the Schomburg Collection. A small stage, but uh, they were those limousines were there, and we were playing the packed houses. And Mr. Wahlberg said, Well, I'll take it down, put it on Broadway. But at the same time, black actors uh, had their, their troubles just as a part of just having a meaningful career. Uh, I, I listened one time as Harry Belafonte talked about the struggles of actors, Cindy Poitier and others, trying to get decent parts, trying to get decent contracts, trying to get quality parts. And I think Fred came into the labor to advance that cause. Uh, Fred uh, he was a political activist as well. Uh, and the trade union gave him a, 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 a platform uh, to both carry on his career, to argue on behalf of of a decent treatment of actors, and at the same time be a force in the political life of the country. Meanwhile, O'Neill was a tireless advocate for the arts through his union activity, and most notably his leadership of the Actors' Equity Association from 1964 to 1973, where he was the first African-American president. And the dedication he invested so relentlessly on behalf of such prominent local institutions as the Harlem Cultural Council and the Schomburg Corporation was also extended to the international arena. It was not until his final breath in 1992 that O'Neill relinquished his place on the ramparts for the arts and black theater. <laughs> 